Hi everyone, it's Nick Marzinski at TrappingLight.com. Today I'm going to be talking about the liquify filter in Photoshop, which can be used for retouching faces and other portrait images, as well as creating some pretty crazy effects. Originally I thought I'd finish out my project today, but with everything that's available within that liquify filter, I really want to spend my time on that. So I'll finish out the image on Monday. So let's get started. Now before I use the filter on the image that I'm actually working on, I want to play around with the liquify filter using a reference image such as this one, because I think it's sometimes easier to grasp what the filter is doing by using it on something that's abstract rather than an image where I have to worry about things like aesthetics and how the image looks. So this is just basically a color wheel that I put together real quick. It's just a circle divided into 12 segments. Now, whenever I'm working with any filter in Photoshop, the first thing that I always do is make a fresh copy of my layer. In this case, I can do that by pressing the Control J, or if we are on a Mac, it would be a Command J, uh, to just duplicate the layer. Otherwise, if my edits are stored on multiple layers like they are in that face picture that I'm working on, I'll use the Control, Shift, Alt, and E command to copy all of my layers up to a new layer. Again, I keep coming back to this idea of non-destructive editing within Photoshop, creating your edits on successive layers and building them up simply because it's so important, particularly when working with filters like Liquify, which can really wreck an image if you're not careful. So I've made a copy of my color wheel, and now I'm going to bring up the filter. Now I'm working in Photoshop CS6, so the directions that I'm going to be giving you are for that version. In CS6, the Liquify filter is found in the Filters menu right under here at Liquify. In other versions of Photoshop, such as Elements, the Liquify filter might also be found in the Distort menu, which is down here. Okay, so if you don't see it at first using the directions that I'm giving you, look around a little bit, usually you'll be able to find it. Once I activate Liquify, Photoshop throws me into the Liquify pop-up. Now, this is how Liquify looks in CS6. If you're using Elements, again, it's going to look different and you're probably not going to have the same functionality that you will within full Photoshop. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that this advanced mode checkbox is selected because it gives me additional options that I've got to work with. You'll notice that within this pop-up my cursor defaults to a brush tool. Along the left sides of the pop-up here are a series of icons. These are the main tools that I've got to work with that I can use on my brush to do all sorts of edits. So I'm going to go through them very briefly. The first one up here is a forward warp tool. Okay, and this is a pretty simple click and drag warp tool. I just click and drag and you can see that it makes the change and it bends my image to accommodate that. The bigger the brush that I'm using, and I'm just expanding my brush by using the right bracket key, the larger the distortion that I get with this particular filter. Okay, this is actually a pretty good filter to use for reshaping faces. If I've got someone with a really round face, what I can do is I can come in here with this filter and just nudge it up just a little bit to make their face look a little bit more shapely. This also works on um, lips if I may use a smaller brush to create a little bit of a smile if I use it at the edge of the lips. Okay, so that's how this tool works. The reconstruction tool is next here. This undoes any liquify action that you've taken. So if I use this tool, if I click on this tool and use the brush, you can see that what it does is it reconstructs the original image. It brings everything back to its original position. This is a good way to brush out on a local level any changes that you've made using the liquify filter, okay? When you're doing retouching, particularly on faces, a lot of times you may need to go back and 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 undo something slightly and just to just to do some final tweaks on something the reconstruction tool is very very good for this if however you want to do a global undo where you undo everything and take yourself right back to the very beginning there's a restore all button right there you click that and your image is right back where you started but again that affects everything if you want to just affect one or two areas of your image you want to use this reconstruction tool the other thing that I should probably bring up at this point is, is that there's this slider here for brush rate. The higher this is set, the faster your brush makes the edit. Usually when I'm using the, re, the, the liquify filter, which I don't do very often, but in the cases where I do, I set it low in the mid-60s. That ensures that I can make these liquify changes very, very gradually. Otherwise, if I have it set all the way to 100, it goes very, very fast, and sometimes it's very, very difficult to, to lock in a look where you have to be very um, careful with it. So that's just one tip that I'm going to give you. From there, let's keep going on. This is the clockwise swirl filter. 
or as I like to call it, the Bob Marley filter, because it just makes everything swirl. And actually at this point, I'm gonna turn the brush rate up because I think it just looks cooler this way. So yeah, this is pretty cool if you're listening to Bob Marley or Jimi Hendrix music. If you hold down the Alt key, it goes the opposite direction. So it becomes the counterclockwise filter. Or if you're in some parts of Britain, I guess it would be the anti-clockwise filter. Um, again, it does pretty much exactly what you'd expect. Again, we'll restore all just to bring it right back to the, to the original part. The pucker tool, again, it does what you'd expect. It puckers things. So it just pulls everything in towards the center. If you're retouching certain portraits, for example, straight on headshots, this can kind of be a good filter to use to uh, slim down someone's nose, for example. If you hold down the Alt key, it becomes the opposite, which is a bloat filter, which you can also find right here. And again, what this filter does is it's the exact opposite of the pucker. It pushes things away from the center. While the pucker filter is very, very good at, um, at working with noses, the bloat filter is really, really awful. So I wouldn't recommend that you use that one but it, it can be useful for certain effects. Again, I'm going to restore all to get us back. The push left filter pushes things in a somewhat different way than the, uh, than the forward warp tool. Um, I don't really use this one all that often, um, but I suppose it can be useful. Um, Again, if you're not getting what you want with the forward warp tool, sometimes this one can be a, um, a good one to use for an effect. And holding down the Alt button, again, reverses the tool just like it does uh, with any of the other tools that I've talked about. Down here, these last two tools that I'm going to be going over are masking tools. The first one is a freeze mask tool. So what I can do is I can paint on over areas of my image here. And what this does is it masks that part of the image from any changes that I'm going to make using any of my other uh, liquify commands. So in this case, where I'm using the clockwise spin, and I'm going to boost the brush rate again just to make it a little bit faster, um, you can see that if I drag my cursor over on this area that's masked, it will not change. But once I get off of that, it's going to do the liquify command that I would use because those areas aren't masked. Below the freeze mask command I also have the thaw mask command which simply undoes the mask. Again if you want to reverse the changes one other way to do it is to simply use the freeze mask command and then hold down the alt key and you'll get the thaw mask. But these are really good ways to if you're going to retouch a portrait using liquify to to do what any, whatever retouching you want to do, these are a really good way to lock in areas that you do not want to be affected when you're running a liquify filter because it will make sure that your liquify uh, edits only go to that masked area and no further. Now, I think I've pretty much pointed out everything uh, that I have to point out about this filter. Um, once I'm done editing with it, all I have to do is click OK and then the changes are applied to my new layer. Again, if I disable the old layer, you can see exactly what happened here. And then within this tool, I can also mask in the changes by, for example, putting a layer mask in there and then using a brush to paint with black areas where I want the effect to be masked out or masked in. So even after I'm done with the liquify filter, I can still mask my changes in and out using a layer mask right within Photoshop. Now that I've talked about the liquify filter, I want to talk a little bit about photographic ethics, okay? If you're going to be retouching portraits of pictures, or portraits of people, I should say, be very careful with it, okay? There's a few reasons. First of all, from the more moment we're born, we get really good at recognizing what faces should look like. And if you go overboard in editing a face, people are going to notice, and the reaction is probably going to border on something like disgust. If you want to see why that is, Google Uncanny Valley sometimes, okay? 
The second thing that I want to talk about with the liquify command is, is that it can be used to create some pretty significant changes to an image. Okay, This is an, a picture that I took of my daughter a few weeks ago. This is unedited right here, what you're looking at other than a raw conversion. With about three or four minutes using the liquify command, I turned it into this. And that's what this the filter can do. It can make faces look more angular, which I did using the forward warp tool here and here. It can make noses and cheekbones more shapely. I did shrink her nose using the pucker tool. It can also do things like shrink waistlines and enhance busts. Okay, Basically, it can be used, and it is used, to create unrealistic ideals of beauty, particularly for women. Okay, I'm the father of two daughters, and using Liquify to retouch images like this, for me, borders on lying. I did it in this particular case to prove a point, but I usually don't feel comfortable doing it on faces or bodies. That's not to say it's wrong. That's just simply to say that that's what my point of view is, and that's what I bring to the table. That said, I simply want you, if you're, when you're watching this tutorial, to be cognizant of the issues and ethical dilemmas that you're playing around with when you start using this filter if you're retouching people's faces. That being said, let's go wreck my face. Here's the image that I'm working on. And we've, I've done all the changes with the plugins and with recoloring my eye blue, which I did at the end of the last tutorial. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new copy of my face. And I'm going to actually create two new copies. So I'm going to use, because I've got everything saved on separate layers and spread throughout the image, I can't use the con control, um, control J command to do a, a copy layer. I'm going to use the Control, Shift, Alt, and E command. I'm going to push it twice to get two copies of my face. And I'll go over this a little bit this time, but more so next time why I'm doing it this way. The lower copy right here, I'm going to disable the top copy. The lower copy here, I'm going to grab the Move tool by pressing V. And I'm just going to move it a little bit to the side here. And that's, I'll come back to why that is. I'm going to be using it when I actually do the spatters next, next time on Monday. But for the moment, all I'm doing is simply doing that and moving it over a little bit. Now I'm going to disable that layer. This top layer, so I'll label this lower one, move face. The top one, I'm going to label liquify face. And from there, I'm going to select this one, go back up into filter, and go to liquify. Now, I'm going to grab my forward warp tool. I'm going to make the brush pretty big because I want to move everything over to the left. And then what I'm interested in doing is expanding the side of my face. Next time on Monday, I'm going to mask in these changes using spatter brushes. But for today, all I'm going to simply do is create that effect, and then I'll mask it in later. So all I need to do is to just simply using the forward warp tool up here, grab my face and drag it off to the side. Now, when I'm doing this, if you if I pick an area and I keep dragging on it, eventually it'll start to distort. And I'll give you a for example. I'll give you an example of that. Let me just freeze an area right here. Then use my forward warp tool and start dragging. And you can see that you start getting some lines here, right there and right there, where it's almost stretching the skin too far. That's something that I want to avoid. And I'm going to just simply use the reconstruction tool to undo all of my changes there and unmask that and go back and continue to do some reconstruction work. I just, that doesn't look so good, but that's fine. It'll all be masked in the end anyways. So from here, I'm pretty much simply dragging my face out so that next time I can mask in how I want it to look. Once this is done, it looks pretty bad right now, but that's fine. We'll come back to it next time and make it look as though the, the splatter effect is, is occurring. Once that's done, all I have to do is click OK. And now I've got something that I can work with right here to uh, create my splatter effect when I'm ready to next week. So that's where I'm going to leave it today. On Monday, I'm going to use layer masks to paint in the splatter effect. Until then, my name is Nick Marzinski with TrappingLight.com. Have a nice weekend, everybody.